Hi, my name is Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 18th year of teaching. Today I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life. Today is Tuesday, November 12th. It's just a regular ordinary day. Um, I am here, it's about almost 7.30. Teachers don't start showing up until about 7.50, 8 o'clock. So I'm definitely here a little bit early, just getting some things done. My son does morning weights, so I get here quite a bit early anyway. So I'm sitting up in my little math office space right here, getting some work done. I do have my plan period, first period, so I'll stay up in this math science office during that time and then I will go down into the classroom that I share with another teacher and I will have two college algebra classes today and a pre-calculus class today. So in my college algebra class, my kids are starting a new unit all about um, functions and domains. So today we're gonna just kind of do the basics. We're gonna look at evaluating functions and we're gonna talk about evaluating piecewise functions. And then on the back, we're gonna talk about what domain is and we're gonna look at finding domain for a couple of functions. The other thing that we're gonna do in pre-calculus, they had a sub last class and so that they worked on the review for their chapter test for the chapter prior to the one that we're starting today. So we're gonna go over all of the answers to that, any questions that they have, and then the next class that I see them, they're gonna take that test. So I just wanted to make sure that they had a day after having the sub to ask questions before they jumped right into that test. So that's why I am starting the new chapter prior to having them test. In pre-calculus, they're gonna be working on graphing exponential functions and log functions. And so I have this here where we're gonna talk about kind of the steps of how to graph the log functions. And then we're gonna just practice some of those. And then on the back, we're gonna just again, describe those transformations because really what we're gonna focus on is once you kind of understand the basic shape of those graphs, let's use those transformations to make our graphs easier. And then we're going to start solving some equations, some of our exponential equations. So we're going to start out with some of our more basic ones, our one-to-one -one equations, and then we're going to get down to some that aren't one-to-one -one and talk about, okay, now that we can't just kind of make our bases the same and figure it out that way, we can use logs to solve those. So that's my plan for pre-calculus today. And then their homework is just, um, they're going to have a four graphs where they make the table and analyze those functions and then on the back they're going to do six where they're going to use the parent function so I've given them those parent functions so they're going to graph the parent function and then they're just using the transformation so on the back there's no tables at all. Okay, so I've got about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes left in my prep and I'm downstairs in our back room. I'm talking really quiet because there's a class going on in here right now, so I don't want to be too loud, um, but I'm just going to continue working on my prep. I try to do everything that I need to that I know I'm going to need to print first on the computer upstairs. And then once I know I'm kind of done with the printer for the day, I head down to my room into the back room. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working and I'll check in with you guys later. Number nine, you're going to get x equals plus or minus three over two i. x equals plus or minus three over two i. Number 10, you're gonna get bracket negative 13 comma seven bracket. Again, bracket negative 13 comma seven bracket is we're talking the set of all real numbers. So we're looking at no more imaginary numbers right now. Okay, so we're just talking real numbers. So for which the expressions defined. So basically what we're talking about are all of the X values that work in our equations. So when we're looking at this, rather than trying to think of this, what are all the numbers that work? If we can figure out what numbers don't work, that'll make it easier to figure out all the numbers that do work. Because all the numbers that do work is much bigger than the numbers that don't work. Okay? So when we're trying to figure out what things we cannot have. Okay? So what you guys need to come up with, we're going to brainstorm, 
are things in math that sort of like when we type it into our calculator, we get an error or when we're working on a problem and you're like, oh, I know this doesn't exist. Okay, so one of our things is a square root of a negative, right? Right, what's the other thing that we can't have in math? Something else that doesn't work. What else can we not have in math? We're working on something and it just doesn't work. All right, what's like one of the things that you guys really hate, you've hated this since you learned it in probably third or fourth grade. Fractions, okay, so what about fractions? <laughs> You're like, I just hate those things. <laughs> Can't have a zero on the bottom, right? So we cannot divide by zero. So the other thing that's gonna break math, right? Break math is when we have zero in the denominator of our fraction. Oh, okay, so um, it's lunchtime. I had about 30 minutes of my second pre-calculus or uh, college algebra class, and now we have lunch for 30 minutes, and then they'll come back for about an hour. So I'm gonna run upstairs, grab my lunch real quick, eat, and just relax until they come back to finish. We do this problem. Which function are we gonna use? The first, the second, or the third? The third, good. The third because if x is seven, seven is gonna be bigger than three. So we would have f of seven equals, with a pen, there we go, x equals in parentheses seven squared minus four. So bring down our f of seven equals, so seven squared is? 49, 49 minus four, so f of seven equals, and I think everybody had the right answer. All right, number two. Do we have a fraction? Yes, okay, so now we have to do a little bit of extra work. So with our fraction, what can't equal zero? The denominator. So we are gonna make a note right in our problem here that that cannot equal zero. Now, I realized for this first problem, it's fairly easy to solve in our head. However, when we try to solve things in our head, when they're really easy, we make really stupid mistakes. So we're not gonna do this in our head, we're gonna do it on paper. I need to figure out what makes my denominator equal to zero, so I can say, hey, it can't be that number. So we're going to write an equation. It's a very simple equation. So I'm gonna see what makes my denominator equal to zero. So x minus five equals zero. And we're gonna solve. So what would we do to solve? Yep, add five to both sides. So we get x equals five. But we know that's what makes it equal to zero. So really we should say x cannot equal zero, five. So we're gonna just make that instead. So we know that x can't be equal to five, but it can be everything else, just not the number five. So how do we write that in interval notation? So it just can't be equal to five. You're really close. Okay. Don't write this down. We're gonna just look at it. So negative infinity to four and six to infinity. Again, don't write this down because it's not the right answer. If it was negative infinity to four, what numbers could work that I don't include in there? 4.9, right? Could this be 4.9? Where's my function? 4.9, 4.9 minus five. Yeah. That's, I, that would be negative 0.1 and that's okay. Okay, also it could be what other numbers am I missing maybe on this side? 5.1, 5.5, 5.9, right? So we're really close. So instead of being negative infinity to four, what should it be? Negative infinity to? five because this as long as we have the parentheses means it's everything until I get to five right so I want that 4.99999 okay and then what should be on this side five so from negative infinity to five union five to infinity as long as we have the parentheses that's just saying don't include five Got a quick outfit change here, future Kate coming in. Um, I just wanted to do a huge shout out to uh, one of my subscribers, Kristen C. She was absolutely amazing and sent me an item off of my Amazon wish list. So she sent me two of these 
um, one beat plug extenders so now I can have extra plugs in my room along with USB and USB-C plugs. Um, this is going to be a huge help in my room when kids are needing to charge their devices. So thank you so much Kristen. I really appreciate the help and the donation to my classroom. Plugging, putting them into right now, our X or our Y on our table, our Y. So on our table, our Y, if we make this one, that'll give us zero. One minus one is zero. Okay, now I want to make this one. So what minus one gives us one? Two. So we're going to make this two. And then just let's get a third point again, just to help us practice. So what would our next point naturally be then? Three. Where is our asymptote going to be? So what equals zero? X equals zero, good. So our asymptote at X equals zero. We can add in our asymptote. And then from there, we should have enough information to draw our graph. Okay, before we do number three, what happened to our graph this is the same parent as the parent function, except I had the plus one. So what happened to our graph from numbers one when I went to number two? It went up one. Does that make sense based on all the information we've been talking about with our shifts? All right. So we can look at this and we should know, hey, my graph should go up one. All right, so clearly not in my classroom anymore. The day is over as soon as my last class ended. I had to go to a new teacher meeting. So even though I'm not a new teacher, you know, as far as number of years teaching, I'm new to the district. So it's a new to the school teacher meeting. And that lasted about 30 minutes. Really this time it was just talking about expectations for final exams and kind of how all of that works. Um, and then as soon as that was over, I had to leave and go get my daughter. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey as I teach, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you have a great day. Bye.